Good morning. Happy Monday. It's a beautiful foggy day out here in sunny California. Where to start? Had a lovely discussion with Laura Shark last night. You probably find that up on Pound Sands channel at this point. Afterwards, um, Southside Slacker was hanging out, and uh, he made an inter interesting point. Um, he has gotten to know some of the police officers in his area, and uh, it's a lot harder to be. It's a lot harder to think that all police officers are bad once you get to know them. Just like everybody else, there are good police officers, there are bad police officers, there are in-between police officers. Not all cops are bad. And every time someone uh, tries to make that claim, like Laura Shark tried to make the claim that all police officers have violated someone's rights, well, I don't think so. I don't think so. If if that was the case, then it would be very easy to be a defense lawyer because you could get all of the evidence thrown out. So cops are disincentivized from violating people's rights. And a lot of the things in the community that the community perceives of as violating rights aren't. If a cop asks you if he could search the car and you say yes, and then he searches your car, that's not a violation of your rights. If he has probable cause that you have something in there, like if he smells weed or sees an open bottle or sees what appears to be the barrel of a gun sticking out from under your seat, depending on your state law, one or more of those may be illegal. And he may not have to ask. He may be able to just search. But to suggest that all cops have violated people's rights is... I would demand to see proof on that. And as of yet, no one has provided me with anything beyond anecdotal evidence of a cop they've seen or a video they've seen violating someone's rights, which is not the same as all cops doing it. Speaking of rights, somebody linked an SGV, he's a California auditor, they linked me a video of him auditing a juvenile detention center. And he was wearing a full mask, fully covered his face. Couldn't even see his eyes. He's acting a fool. He was a bully with a camera. Now in California, again, as uh, I like to rub in the noses of the Texas auditors who mock us over our gun laws, we have amazing freedoms of speech. And in the parking lot of that prison, he almost assuredly was allowed to film. There is a uh, there's precedent for a prison parking lot being used as basically um, prisoners union people who were advocating for prisoners' rights wanted to meet with some of the prisoners who were sweeping up out there and, you know, hand out literature and things like that. And California said under California's constitution, that's A-OK. -okay. That's Jim Dandy. And so you could probably film in that parking lot too. Again, it comes down to whether or not in California, and this is only for California. Oh, we're pooping. You're going to get pocket time. Let me just make sure that I have the bag in the right pocket before I stick you in with the bag. All right.
All right, I think we're good. You always got to make sure the bag is tied good and tight before you put it in your pocket. It's never good to mess that one up. Because you guys, in California, under California's constitution, it's an incompatibility test where you check in to see if it is if the activity that's being regulated is incompatible with the use of the facility and filming in a prison parking lot would probably not be incompatible with the use of that building so he was protected under the california constitution but he wanted to say that there's no expectation of privacy in public and once again yes there is there are lots of expectations for privacy in public that's how, that's how they get laws on the books about people filming up skirts, you know, the, the peeping, you know, putting a camera on the toe of your shoe or, or a mirror on the toe of your shoe to try to peep under ladies' skirts. That's illegal in a lot of states. Maybe all, I don't know. I've seen several. Uh, Wiretapping laws, uh, two-party consent where even in public, someone can have an expectation of privacy. Like if you uh, go to the edge of a park where there's no one around and you want to have a conversation and someone uses an electronic device to overhear your conversation, that may be illegal, depending on your state law. And that would not be unconstitutional. So, so there are expectations of privacy in public, but, but basically um, that SGV guy was just a bully with a camera. Um, I, I guess it makes him happy to torment uh, prison officials who you'd think would have better things to do than be out dealing with some asshole in the parking lot who's probably next going to scream about wasting government funds or something. Oh yeah, if you made a false 911 call, I'm going to sue your ass. Oh my god. Just hoping, hoping for something to sue on. Oh, not a good person. Not a good person. I guess that's really all I wanted to talk about this morning was uh, that little nugget of information of knowledge with uh, Southside Slacker and the uh, SGV video. Um, yeah. Anyway, um, thank you for watching and have a great day.